Welcome to Chemistry with Caroline. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at sp3 hybridization of carbon atoms. So if you haven't watched the introduction to hybridization for organic chemistry, go back and watch that because you're going to need to kind of have that foundation first because we're going to dive right in here. So we talked in that video about hybridization being the combination of atomic orbitals to give new hybrid orbitals that allow for different bonding patterns. So I'm again going to invoke that energy diagram where I have the energy of the atomic orbitals. And we're looking specifically at the valence orbitals because those are the ones that are involved in bonding. So this is for a carbon atom. Remember that carbon has um, two electrons in the 2s orbital and then two electrons in the 2p orbitals. Those are both singly occupied. So these are the atomic orbitals. of a carbon atom, the valence atomic orbital. So I'm going to refer to those as AO from now on. Um, and that looks as though it would only accommodate two bonds because it has two unpaired electrons. Hybridization postulates that you combine or mix atomic orbitals in order to get new hybrid orbitals. So for sp3 hybridization, you use the s and all three of the p orbitals to make new hybrid orbitals. So you're taking the s and all three of the p orbitals and combining those to make four new orbitals. So if you use all four atomic orbitals, you're going to get four new hybrid orbitals. And these are going to be about three quarters of the way up in energy relative um, to the s and the p because they have a little bit of s character pulling their energy down, but they are three quarters p character. So these are four new hybrid orbitals and each orbital is one quarter s character and three quarters p character and those electrons are going to redistribute into these hybrid orbitals and then you can see that I now have four singly occupied orbitals and so that means that I could make four sigma bonds um, with these hybrid orbitals. So this sp3 hybridization allows for a central atom that can accommodate four sigma bonds. Okay, so now we know the theory of what's happening behind hybridization, but how does that play out when we look at organic molecules? How can we look at a molecule and identify the hybridization of a given carbon atom? So in looking at these, they're going to accommodate the four sigma bonds, like we said. I'm going to use methane, which is the simplest hydrocarbon there is, just um, one carbon, four H's. I've drawn two of those H's in plane, um, but Vesper theory states that those electrons or those groups are going to get as far apart as possible to minimize repulsion. And so it's not going to be planar. We're not going to have them all in plane. It's going to be three-dimensional. In order to show that, when I draw something on a two-dimensional paper, I need to use wedges and dashes. And so this allows me to show something um, that is three-dimensional on a two-dimensional page. And so I'm using a wedge to show things that are coming out at me. So that'd be sticking out of the screen at you. And then I'm using a dash to show anything that's going back. And that allows me to show that it's not um, a two-dimensional structure. So this carbon atom here has one, two, three, four things around it. So if we go back to thinking about the hybridization, right? This is an sp3 um, hybridization bonding pattern where we have these four sigma bonds. So the hybrid orbitals are made of one quarter s character, right? We don't have a superscript normally for the s, but it can help with this little shortcut here. Uh, and three quarter p character. So if I add that one plus three, I see four. And I just counted four groups around that central carbon atom. So this carbon is sp3 hybridized. So internal atoms like that carbon there tend to hybridize. Uh, terminal atoms tend not to. So those H's are not going to be hybridized. They're going to be able to make their single bond um, just with their atomic orbital. So when we look at this bonding pattern, there's four identical bonds between a, a central carbon and a terminal um, hydrogen atom on there. So these are all going to be sigma bonds 
between a carbon that has an sp3 hybrid orbital coming off of it that is overlapping with a hydrogen 1s orbital. So hydrogen, right, the, it just has an electron configuration of 1s1. So it's got an s orbital with one unpaired electron and it can just bond. Hydrogens are not going to hybridize. Um, you do, there is a energy penalty to hybridize, but it allows for this more stable bonding pattern. With terminal atoms, they can already make the bond without having to hybridize. And so what I've just drawn here describes the type of bond that we see there. It's a sigma bond, right? It's a single bond between an H and a C. Um, here's the carbon, right, that is bonded to the H, and then it is an sp3 hybrid orbital that is housing one electron on the carbon that is overlapping with a 1s orbital that is housing one electron on the H. They get that sort of ideal distance apart from one another to maximize attraction and minimize repulsion, and that is the bond length. That's the bond. So the combination of all of these atoms arranged around this central sp3 hybridized carbon is going to give a specific bond angle um, that minimizes that repulsion, and that's 109.5, or about 109. That's the furthest away these groups can get with four sigma bonds when you have um, all bonds to other atoms. And then the shape of this molecule is described as tetrahedral. So that is the shape of this sort of non-planar uh, distribution of four groups. One is sticking out, one is going back, two can be described in plane, and 109.5 degrees is as far apart as they can get. So this has been a look at sp3 hybridization in organic chemistry for carbon atoms. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks!